Okay, Rosario. So today we're supposed to talk about the understanding a deal pipeline. And the reason for this topic is because many times whenever we have people who are maybe a part of mastery come to the RIA, um, they want to basically do what a lot of your clients do or what we do in the marketplace, which is how do you have uh, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 closing, let's say in uh, Ron's case, right? Yep. How do you scale your business up, right? That scalability is what I want to kind of talk about. So let's first talk about, I guess, what is the definition of scalability uh, as it relates to you? To me, is is building a business that you're going from five flips a year to the following year, 10, 15, but building a legit business. Okay. That is scalability to me. So, and you said- Subway. Uh, okay. Build a subway. Build a McDonald's in real estate. So what a business is, is a repeatable process with a certainty at the end of it, which is that you can duplicate it. You uh, do one thing and the results can be duplicated over and over and over repeatable. with a repeatability so that you have a predictable result. Yes. Okay. So the second thing is, what do we mean by a deal pipeline? A deal pipeline is having inventory coming at you so that you're not scrambling for the next deal, right? If you were a Subway or you were a McDonald's and somebody comes into line and you don't have the ingredients or you don't have the, the food to serve them, what do you have, right? In the same way in real estate, people are looking at the next deal um, when they're ready for the next deal. You can't be looking for the next deal when you're ready. You have to be looking for it always. Okay. So this is an advanced concept I want to get, and get, get into. And it's a Subway example is a good example. I mean, think about this, right? In a Subway, based on the location, they're going to have a predictable amount of buns that they're going to um, bake. Hopefully right? gluten-free. Yeah, hopefully gluten-free, right, in your case. Uh, but they're going to bake, let's just say, 100. Now, if they see that by, let's say, 12 o'clock, they ran out of 75 of those, and they expect that their predictable dinner crowd needs another 50, guess what? They need to get those in the oven before come 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock, whatever dinner time is. So they have those statistics, which is by the day or by the, uh, by the weekend, if it's a downtown location, they might have more foot traffic in the afternoon than in the evening, right? So there is a, they have some inventory that they create before uh, they open the store. And then as the store is open, in the background, they're baking more so that they're ready for the customer who's yet to you come. You said the key word, they're ready. Correct. So, and that's the same thing in real estate, right? That's what we mean by the deal pipeline. So when we talk about deals, what types of deals are there in the marketplace? You have MLS and then you have off-market. Okay. So two, uh, we tend to do the same exact thing, right? We tend to categorize deals in two big buckets. And then in those buckets, you can further break down each bucket. So one is MLS, multiple listing service, and you can have a bunch of deals that are listed on MLS. But because it's one service that's like an aggregator, basically, yep. of all the deals, right? So we treat that as one. Yes. In the second bucket, which I'll call the off-market deals, right? In that bucket, what types of deals are put in that bucket? Auction, probate, uh, deals brought to you by wholesalers, shadow okay. inventory. So, so hold on. I'm going to stop you because I know uh, you were one of the biggest REO brokers, yes. right? What exactly is shadow inventory? We're not going to talk about shadow inventory. Okay. So too, complex. too complex. I mean, it's... it's, okay. it's, it's, it's Assets on paper. You know, Assets so, on paper that yeah. are owned by the bank. Yes. Okay. So we're going to just put that aside, table that topic for today's discussion. Okay. So tax lien investing, this a yes. bunch of stuff, right? Estate sales. Estate yes. sales, all kinds of stuff. That is off market. Yes. Right? So for today's discussion, um, because this is something that a lot of people have this notion, right? And correct me if I'm wrong. They have this notion. They're like, but Andrew, you know, uh, people who do tons of flips, people who do tons of business, the only place they find properties are off market. Like this hidden place where they go to find properties, right? Yep. Now, you've done a ton of sales, right? Yes. Uh, and you've dealt with big hedge funds. Yes. Right? Uh, and you specifically cater to a lot of people who do purely flips or who keep properties for rentals, Rental. yep. right? Where do they find properties? A majority are off the MLS. They're on the MLS properties. Yes, basically. on the MLS. Yes. On the MLS. The yes. MLS deals. Yes. Okay. Why? B 
because that's the source that has tens of thousands of properties at any given time in our market available for us to go after. It's a structured system. When you're dealing with off-market, right, there's so many unknowns. The MLS, these are sellers that have engaged a broker to sell their property. They're but ready to go. Here's the normal excuse, right? I mean, and we get these calls on the radio show. Hey, Andrew, but you don't understand, right? So, I mean, my question always is that there's a lot in this world I don't understand. How to find a flip at a rental property in our market, I understand pretty well, right? Um, so, to the tune of hundreds of those suckers. And so, I'm like, what's the problem? They're like, what, what you don't understand is the market is very hot. I'm like, well, that was news to me, right? This is the first time anybody has ever brought this up. I'm like, what is exactly the point? And their point is this, but in the MLS, everybody knows about it. And because everybody knows about it, that means I can't find any deals. Uh, number one, is that a true statement? No. Okay. Um, to me, it's a very foolish statement, right? And uh, before we kind of get into it, I want to kind of kind of go off a little bit, and I think as we talk about, as we have the discussion, this point will get explained, yep. right? My question is this, and this is some. There's a lot of people that we know that have done one or two flips, right? And they're kind of in that mode of, man, you know, I'm going to do this flip. Once I close this flip, then I'm going to start looking for the next property, yeah. right? And it's it's kind of the, the chicken and the egg type of scenario. If I get, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. So if you want to build a business out of this, right, and what would you say is the average profit on a rehab, on a flip? I'm, well, I'm going to just take generalities. People who actually make a profit, right, I'm going to just take a number of 25 to about 30, 35, right? For today's discussion, how about we just limit to 25, okay. right, per, per, per flip. But I want to kind of, before we actually jump into it, because I know you are dying to jump into the numbers. I'm this, sorry, right? I'm chomping at so, the bit. But so. I want to kind of talk about two things, because this will relate to another recording I want to do uh, with you, which is, it's a twofold strategy. One is a deal issue, and the second is a money issue, right? So the money issue for today's discussion, I want to just put that aside. We'll talk, because that's a very technical topic and it's a very exciting topic because there's so many sources of money that are available today because people are like well you don't understand i only have money for one deal right if you have money for one deal we can easily show you how you can do 10 deals i mean that's not even a question but for today i'm just going to put that aside right okay. so i want to specifically stick to deals and we want to talk about growth and building your pipeline right so let's just say somebody wants to has the ambition to be able to close 10 closed deals this year. And I'm focusing on the word closed. What I mean by that is in the year of, uh, I'm just going to take, let's say, 2017, January 1st to December 31st, 2017. I want to do 10 deals closed. That's the goal of somebody that wants to grow to that, right? Uh, goal. How many deals do they have to purchase to be able to actually do a close to close 10 deals that year? So... The point I was trying to make right. on the on the one to two, right? You're looking at 15 to 18 to get to 10. So if that person wanted to do two, like in your previous sure. example, the reality is they're going to probably end up with one. Correct. So let's just explain that, right? That way it will make sense to people. So think about it. Let's say on January 1st, you basically set out to look for a property. Yes. Right? So it's going to be probably January, February. By the time you really close the property, maybe you find it in the first 15 days, 30 days, more likely 45 days. Then by the time you close, everything assuming goes perfectly, which life never does. You maybe close on it. You're supposed to close March 1st. Somehow it closes March 15th. Yep. Now you're like, man, I'm going to get hurry up and get the work done, the 30-day project. Um, I'm going to bet it goes 45 days. And then, you know, it's just two weeks. One more week left somehow drags into three more weeks. Now you're, and it's funny uh, how that always happens. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of funny, right? So March is gone. April is gone. You're in May or June sometime when the property comes back on the market. Now, if you look at the timeline, right, you're already six months into the year, right? And guess what? This property is not even listed yet. Now you're going to list the property. There's going to be some market inventory time. Even if you sell it the day one, you're going to have inspections. You're going to have all the stuff. Buyer's going to need 45, 60 days. Yep. So by the time you sell it, right, think about it. You said, man, this year I'm going to do two deals. Sounded great because your resolution 
on December 31st was, man, New Year, this is what I'm going to make it happen. And it's great that you took action. The problem is this. The time to set that goal would have been October of the year before. Yeah. Because at that time, it's if when you started you looking, yeah. you would buy the property first week or maybe even a little bit before January, bring a deal into this year, get it rehabbed, get it on the market so that by the mid year, you have that property under contract and if not sold or closed. In the meantime, as that property is getting pretty much close to completion, you need to be looking for your second deal. Yes. Right? There is this inventory that you have to start building a little bit and start the process. But you're like, what, well, Andrew, I might not even have the money. This property is not closed. But guys, think about it. If you want to scale, you're going to have to start building a little bit of inventory. Money part of it, we will talk about at one time. So I want to go back to the 10 deal example. Yeah. Right? I want to close 10 deals. So it's not practical that you're going to buy 10 houses and be able to close those by the end of this year. If somebody says, you know, I was used to a good salary, I was making a lot of money working for a company, per deal I'm going to make 25,000, man, this year I want to make quarter million bucks or to close 10 deals. Well, if you want to close 10 deals, I want to back into these numbers. Then that year, technically, or the year before, uh, two or three, four months before that, you needed to have 14, 15 deals bought for that year. Yeah. to be able to actually close 10 deals in that year of 2017, correct? Yes. Okay, so because a lot of times people will, you know, and this is the reason I bring this up is this, people will tell me all the time, like, you know, Andrew, man, this year I'm going to close 80 deals. Really? How many pending inventory do you have? Total inventory. Oh, right now we just have one or two. So let me understand this. You're going to close 80 transactions this year, and in process, total, bought, rehabs, under contract, and close to closing, you have two. I mean, I don't know what Never. world do you live in Never. that is impossible to do. Well, because people aren't planning. Right. They're not planning. They're just going off of emotion, and they're just going off of, oh, now it's time. Right. You know, now it's time. No, right. it's always time. Right. It's always time to have inventory and to be ready. So, goal is 10, yep. right? So I needed to, so basically, ideally, if somebody says, okay, January 1st, I'm going to start, right? And by the end of the year, I want to do 10, right? Unless they have Complete loads of money. Complete turns. Yeah. So bought, resold, 10. 10. Yeah. Right? That means they're going to have to buy five, six, seven, eight properties right off the bat. Yes. Be able to rehab that many. Yep. Get it on the market. Get those sold quickly. And, and in the start, meantime, scale yeah. up and buy a bunch more. Yes. Right? So I want to kind of just build that back. So now, to do 10 properties this year, you said you need to have about 15 to 16 properties, so three or four, two or three under contract, two or three, to be ready to close, yes. right, to buy the properties. You have two or three under construction, two or three properties under contract to be able to be sold to the end buyer. Yes, Did different I, stages. Different stages. Yes. You have to be able to stage that. I yep. guess it's the right way to put it is that you have to be able to stage that depending on how big your inventory is, how when the inventory sells in your market, is it a winter market? If you're in Phoenix, the winters are going to be the hot markets compared to your summer market, right? Yes. If you're in Chicago, uh, it's going to change a little bit. So you got to really stagger that to be able to grow your business. Yes. Right? Now, you said for 10 properties, you need basically 15 to 18 properties bought this yes. year. Yes. Right? So let's go back on one more step uh, because we're talking about building your pipeline and understanding what a pipeline looks like for a business. To be able to actually get 15 properties under contract, right? How many, pro on an average, prop offers do you need to have made that year or the year before, depending on which way you're going, to be able to get 15 to 18 properties under contract? So our hit rate falls between 5 to 7%. So let's just use 5%. Uh, so to end up with 15, 300? 300 offers. 300 offers. You have to make. Yes. Okay. So, you know, for somebody, that even for people who have a goal of doing 8, 10 properties, right? 300 just sounds like a ludicrous number. Let's just be honest here. Yes. Right? And I would bet to say is this. If you actually made 300 offers, actually made 300 offers, I think you would end up with way more than 10 closed. Because what would happen is as you start going along, you would become really good at, at, your, yes. at making the offers, at being selective of which ones you actually offer. Right? But we're just using the general. General, absolutely. Yep. Okay. 
So here's the question, because this is what comes up. Whenever people say, you know, man, I can't find deals. What I'm going to say is that how many offers did you make? How many properties did you look at, right, to be able to have the ability to be able to make offers? So in your particular thing, you've seen uh, hedge funds buy properties at a massive scale. Yes. Right? Hundreds of properties. How many offers were you making at that time for them as a business? We were making 150 offers a week. A week? A week. Right? With the goal being of how many uh, under contract a week? Their hit rate was higher. Right. Their hit, their hit rate was, let's say, 10%. Um, so, yeah, to get 15 accepted a week, we were submitting 150 offers okay. a week. So, you know, these numbers just sound like crazy to somebody, right? How do you actually put a system like that in place where, number one, if you go to an average broker, right, uh, and we're talking about this in the Chicago line market, which is going to translate to anywhere else in the country, right? Um, but if you go to an average broker and say, hey, man, this year I'm going to buy 10 houses, they're going to be excited. They say, you know, I need a pending inventory 15, they're going to be even more excited. And when you tell them I'm going to make 300 offers, they're going to want to shoot you and themselves in the process. Yeah. Right? How does this all work? It, I, I hate keep bringing up the, you know, the subway or the McDonald's analogy, but it's systems, right? At the end of the day, it's assembly line, it's processes. If you go to a burger place and it's a, it's a mom and pop and they have no systems in place, they're going to be scrambling to kick out um, the amount of burgers they need to, right? But then you walk across the street to McDonald's and they're doing 10 times the volume with half the people, right? Right. And the system's in place. So for us, um, we learned the hard way. We had a giant assembly line. Then we brought technology into play. So what we've done essentially is built a giant filter. So we... So what Click Invest is, yes. right? What your business is, what you do, uh, and why we're having this discussion is that you have two ways of doing this, right? Either somebody does it the way I did it for yeah. my own business, right? Which is sit in front of the MLS and every day go through um, all the new activated price changes, blah, 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 and miss a lot of inventory. Right? Yes. People think that they're like, man, you guys have done well. I'm like, yes, we're blessed. But they really have this crazy notion that I'm sitting in front of the MLS and going through all the properties. Like you realize we miss 99.9%, if not 99.9999999% because in a market where last year in the MLS there were close to 125,000 transactions, if not more, right? Um, how many transactions were ours? Let's just be honest here, right? How many transactions do you think a person who's considered a quote-unquote successful flipper or successful real estate investor? Yes, the reality of the industry is if you're doing two or three a year, it's a big deal, yep. right? When you get in our world of 40s to 50s to a 60s, 70 properties a year, that is unheard of. Right? I mean, Ron, your client, Ron, yes. right? and you have other guys like him, which, how many transactions a year? Anywhere from 35 to 60. 35 to 60, right? Yep. So they understand what a pipeline is. And yes. what you guys do is help investors build that pipeline where you constantly have deals coming in. They're working on the deals. They're basically rehabbing them. They're moving it towards the closing. They're getting them closed. So in the meantime, you have a bunch more properties that are ready to go. Is that correct? Yes. If you look at, so to go back to the, the filter um, analogy. So at any given time in our market, there's 25,000 single family homes within a 50 mile radius of downtown Chicago. Okay. What Click Invest does is take all 25,000 properties and, and analyze them every day and takes it from 25,000 to the top 150. And then from the top 150, we find the top 20 to 25 a day. A day. A day. Per day. Yes. Okay. Because that's the other thing is that this is the crazy notion that people have. And uh, and I've had this happen, right? Uh, in mastery, people are like, well, Andrew, you know, I bet you today you can't find a property. Right? I'm like, I'm not going to say today in this second, but I will take a $1,000 bet with anybody, any given day of the market, where I bet you I can find a property right within two to three days it'll have at least 25 30 percent margins right and not every deal is going to be oh my god fifty thousand dollars yeah deal. It, it, that's not reality yeah. right but certainly i can find great margins for flips and for rentals 
Because guess what? Guys, when there's five, six, seven thousand properties at any given time that are active, what are you looking for? One at a time or two at a time or three at a time, right? That's it. You're not looking for hundreds of properties. Yeah. And this is a crazy notion that a lot of times people have that, oh my God, I just can't find it. You know, that's different if you don't know how to look on what how and for. where to look right absolutely because we seem to be able to find a ton of these properties perfect example is for us uh, you guys put in i don't know eight ten twelve offers i think yeah. it was and th two or three of them got accepted three accepted three yeah. accepted right yeah. and the hit rate of course i'm not going to bid on a property if 10 people are going after it the likelihood of somebody like me to bid on it is going to be very slim because I'm, I don't really necessarily want to compete. I always want to have some edge. Maybe it's the edge that I know the neighborhood. Maybe it's the edge that I know the broker. Maybe it's the edge that we have done tons of those houses in that particular subdivision. You're buying the property for a flip and I'm buying for a rental. I can beat you hands down every time yep. if you're buying it for a flip and I because you're going to be very price sensitive. If I'm buying it for a rental, if I pay a thousand bucks more, 500 bucks more, is it going to make a difference? No. No. But that thousand bucks will beat you out of we'll the competition. Get you, we'll get right? you the deal. And yeah. a lot of times, I think when people think about growth, right, they never think about the deal pipeline. They never think about building a business, right? All they think about is, man, I started doing flips, and voila, today I'm super successful, and I got a Ferrari, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Yeah. Right? No. I mean, nobody talk because because this is building a business, business. step yeah. by step there's no step. difference between real estate and a mcdonald's it's right. a business you can't be reactionary right. that's even a word is reactionary or yeah. no no it, it is it's, but you know what i mean you can't it you can't go into it thinking that oh well tomorrow this is going to happen no you have to be building the business at all times and running it like a business because it is a business so it's like a funnel right you have yes. to keep Feeding, feeding the, the pipeline, yeah. right, on the thing. And a lot of deals, because you have different sieves in that funnel, a lot of the stuff, like the first filter, is going to filter out 95% of the stuff. Sure. Then it's going to filter out even more, even more, even more. What you want out of that funnel is a continuous flow of properties that meet your criteria. Yes. Right? I mean, that's the, and anybody who says, well, I do X, Y, Z. Right? And then you don't you can't show me a deal pipeline where if you say I'm gonna close sixty deals this year, well you better have the twenty five, thirty deals in that pipeline. What I mean by that is you need to have that in inventory. Either it's bought, it's sitting, it's you haven't gotten to it yet, it's being rehabbed, or it's back on the market, or it's getting ready to be closed. If you don't have that inventory, it is impossible for you to be able to close, you know, two, three, four, five, six, ten deals. Doesn't really matter. As your, uh, I guess, goal, ambition for the year goes up, so has to your pipeline has to be that big, and you have to keep feeding it more and more and more deals. And just like every other business, you need cash flow, right? right. If if the burger joint opens up, and in imagine if it has one day. Of cash flow coming in. Right. Just one day a year. Right. Boom. Boom. All of it. Right. It all came in. Right. We're good. Right. Or boom, it didn't all come in. Right. Now what? That day it snowed. That day it was a you know a whole bunch of rain. And guess what? You're up the creek. Yeah. So the reason I bring this up is because a lot of times whenever we talk about building a business, most people never understand that this is like any place you go to work. They have systems in place. Now, you might say, you know something, man? I can do one-off. Any one of us can build a better burger than most burger places, right? How, buy great quality ingredients, take care of what you cook, and you can probably come up with a big, a good burger. The problem is this. How do you do it from the time somebody orders it? Within the two minutes it takes you, or the, you know, where they, you drive around the driveway, and basically, you're, uh, you're basically making the order, and boom, you pay for it, and then you don't want to wait a second. Within that 60 seconds, 90 seconds that it takes, you need your Coke, you need your fries, and you need your burger. Well, guess who's the best in the world at doing it? It's McDonald's, yep. right? There's a lot of gourmet chains that can take half an hour to make a great burger, mm -hmm. and they can beat McDonald's hands down. But guess who has the most revenue? It's McDonald's. Hands Not down. because they make the best burger. Because guess what? They make the same burger, like it or not, but you know around the world it's going to be the same crappy burger every time. But you know what you get. 
And what pipeline means is that, is building a business, and it's important to understand that the fundamentals, what it takes to build a business. You're not going to go from doing one deal to 10 deals just because you have a goal and you have a passionate desire and write it down. You can write it down all you want. That's important. But what is important is understanding the business fundamentals. As we wrap this up, anything else you want to kind of share? You mentioned stages earlier, and I think that was a really, really good point. Um, you know, you have to operate in stages and you have to ramp up. With every business, you to start out slow. But if your goal is to do two deals this year, no, you're going to have to buy four. You know, that's just a mindset. And just know their stages and roll with that. Um, and, and just, I mean, think about it, this, guys. Just to make it very simple, right? Let's say you start looking for a property January, right? Like we said earlier. January, February, imagine looking for a property, getting it under contract. You know, February, March, sometime maybe end of March, you close. Your lender doesn't come through or your money doesn't come through or whatever happens. Life happens, right? Now you have April. May, June, it takes you a couple to three months to get the rehab done. Now, if you're in June and you're half the month into it, I mean, excuse me, half the year into it, what you need to start doing is you need to start looking for your next deal even before your first deal is done. Because guess what? Your goal is to get two of them done this year. Yep. So you have to stage that accordingly. And as you grow, your staging will start increasing more and more and more. And you're going to start predicting, okay, if I want to do X, Y, Z this year, right? Then what pace do I need to go at? It's like if you say, okay, I'm going to go from here to a destination. I'm going to go from Chicago to Indianapolis, right? It's 180 miles. Now, guess what? If you're only driving at 20 miles an hour and you want to get there in three hours, it's a simple math. It's 180 miles, and you want to get there in three hours. What is the math? You take 180 divided by three, right? Every hour, if you don't cover a certain distance, guess what's going to happen? You're not going to get there. You need to drive the car at 60 miles an hour. So now if there's construction, guess what happens? You've got to make up for it in the next mile. So maybe you speed a little bit more, right? And then you're like, oh, my God, i got to catch up. For last 10 minutes, I was in 40, mile, 40 miles, I could only drive. Right, so now I got to speed up, and it's the same exact way of building a business, and that's really what a deal pipeline is. Because people who have that up and down, and most people have that, right, that they don't understand deal flow, and they don't understand having a deal pipeline. And and when you have the up and down, when you speed up to right. try to make up ground, you get tickets. Exactly. <laughs> you, you pay the you price. Get smacked every time. You pay the you're price like, for oh it. Oh my God, I'm running out of time this year, so let me just go ahead and buy this property. Because I think I know maybe it's not as good, but you know I'm gonna. Do and you this start and forcing we're... things because you know, and then that's not a business, and then you run into trouble. It becomes Actually, a trade. You know, that's a final thought. I want to leave that uh, before we wrap up this recording, which is um, a lot of times people think that they get into real estate, and that day real estate god is supposed to give them a deal that week. Oh right? yeah. And they try to force Always. the market. Yeah. They try to force the market, and a lot of times what investing is is this. You can never force the market. You have to be in the marketplace, and you have to let the marketplace hand the deals to you. I had, sorry, I, I had a guy last night blow me up. Uh, former client, now he's ready for another one. He's ready for another. You should yeah. always be ready, right? right? Blow me up last night. I need a deal right now right. because his deal closed. And I said, if you need a deal right now, you should have been submitting offers. 45 days ago. Yes. Yeah. Okay? Exactly. You always need to be ready. The, the best investors we have that are prepping for, what, the spring market, guess what they're doing? They're, they're buying, buying right buying, now. Buying. You know, we were just talking about this today. We're just before you came in, we were going through, with, I think, 18 or 20 properties that are on the books right now, right? These are not rentals. These are properties that have yet to be touched or are being worked on. And two or three of them, Raul's like, man, nobody can get to them right now. Let's get somebody. I'm like, listen, we can't sell those until February anyways. It's okay. Let's get all the rentals done, and then let's put the flips on a little bit of back burner because we'll get a little bit better price in, in February. Spring. And yeah. guess what's going to happen? Come February, boom, 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 a lot of those properties are going to be gone. And now suddenly, even people like us are not going to have inventory. We know that. So we have to predict that going into the next year. How much can we buy at great pricing in winter? 
so that we have a carryover pending inventory going into the new year. Kind of sounds like a business. It's a business, exactly. <laughs> so I just wanted to bring up that topic because that's a topic that I've never heard covered. Right? It's too much of a business topic, I think, for real estate people sometimes because that is how a business looks at it. And you can source deals from MLS. You can source deals from a lot of places. The easiest being is MLS and easiest being using something like what you guys do, right? Yep. which is always provide deals day in and day out. doesn't matter what happens. Whenever. Yep. Right? So, again, great discussion. Look out for the next recording. The next recording is specifically going to be on building scale. We're going to start with, uh, we're going to talk about money, and we're going to start with your business lines of credit on the front end, uh, hard money, and then how do you gr uh, scale up to being an investor where you're borrowing lines of credit, where you have a million, two million, three million dollar open lines that you use. How do you grow into that? A lot of times people think that, well, as I grow, I'm just going to pay cash for stuff. Guys, think about any business. People who own big businesses, they're very wealthy people. They're not using their own hard cash to build another business. So we're going to talk about that. How do you scale and how do you grow? So that's going to be about how do you grow your business and basically it's going to be based on money. Hope you enjoyed this recording. Thanks a bunch. Thank you, Rosario. Thank you.